Testing, testing, testing. One, One two, two, three. three. Um, what do you like about eggs and bacon? I like the egg and bacon part. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> um, I'm having a crazy allergic reaction, but we're gonna do this anyway. True yeah, story. she has a cat, and I'm like, wait, I look decent right now. You don't. <laughs> Okay, let me see how it looks, actually. Uh, hideous. Hi, my name is Chris Gatewood. <laughs> I was trying to get you to say, uh, it, like, if we're doing an interview and stuff, I'll I, say, I thought hey, you I'm were going to be like, I feel like we need to practice this first. But after, f oh, let me not. Anyway, my name is Chris Gatewood, and I'm the, the director. Blah. We're going to have some bloopers. I know, <laughs> so many. A little, beep. You know, like this. Hi, my name is Chris Gatewood, and I'm the mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <of> my <laughs> children. <laughs> my name is Chris Gatewood, and I'm the director of Seniors 2012. Uh, and. <laughs> <laughs> This is not like, like an advertisement for Crossroads. This is not something that they asked us to do. We really went upon ourselves to really uh, do this idea and take you know a simple slideshow and turn it into a full feature length film. So for us, this is just something that we thought was very important to us and- Something we enjoy doing. Exactly. Wait, should we start from the beginning? Go for, yeah, let's, let's do right. it. Hi, my name is Chris Gatewood uh, and I'm the director of Seniors 2012. And my name is Lindsay Emery. I'm the co-director. I originally wanted to do a slideshow for our class uh, and play it at the at graduation. And I was like, this would be a great idea. I'll just get all the pictures like at the beginning of the year, um, and I'll just make a really, really cool slideshow. I remember him coming into advisory and just asking everybody to send every single Facebook photo they have to Chris. But a month or two later, he comes in and he has a trailer for a movie. And he played it on the TV in advisory. And so then we sort of talked to each other. We were kind of into the idea of working together. And I became co-director. And now we're here. Now we have an interview with thing. a cat filled house. <laughs> When I got Lindsay to uh, join the project, um, I, she shared the same idea that I had about just how different Crossroads was and how unique it was uh, inside our, our very, very unique community. I, um, I'm really, really excited about this project. Um, I've been doing uh, probably well over 100 videos for the school before then. Um, we did all types of videos recapping whatever's going on inside the school. And I was like, hey, let's make an entire movie. But Lindsay and I, we wanted to go out and create something different, something that we had not seen before. And by looking online, I didn't really see a lot of movies or films, uh, short films, um, at this caliber of this sort of topic from students. So I thought it would be a really cool idea. And so uh, Lindsay and I have been working together, and this project that should normally take about a year and a half to create, we decided to tackle and, you know, try and do in four to five months. At Crossroads, 
They start you in seventh grade and you go all the way to 12th grade. So a lot of us, the majority of our class, has been here since seventh grade. And that is a very long time. <laughs> so we've gotten really, really, really close. Especially considering the size of Crossroads, which is 230 kids, which is very small in comparison to other high schools. Even in one year, you feel like you've known them for longer. I know, I was just talking with a few people before, and they are like, I just came last year. And I was like, really? Because I feel like you've been here since eighth grade. The benefit to being in such a close environment for such a long time is really being able to grow with one another and become a family because like Chris is like my brother. I have friends that are practically like family in our grade. You're not you're not going into a school to be part of a school community. You're going in and getting a second family. We're able to overcome our differences and work together and find success. And I see that pretty much across the board at Crossroads for every single grade. And that's something I think you wouldn't necessarily find at every single high school you would look at. When I first came to Crossroads in seventh grade, um, I was very set on you know what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to either be a musician, uh, I'd been playing uh, drums, percussion, uh, since I was three years old. ingrained in music and the arts and I was like I really want to be able to do this I don't know if I want to you know major in this uh, in the future but that's something I definitely want to go into and then I explored uh, politics as well and I was like I really like politics and I really like you know uh, aspects of this and that um, and I was pretty much that set on it but I experienced so many different changes there's so many different influences uh, inside of Crossroads that definitely made me rethink you know what I really want to do and I saw many many other opportunities. There are plenty of art classes, there are different types of artwork. For example, the art wall, you have plenty of different art from people from seventh grade all the way up to AP art classes. And it's awesome because everyone's work uh, is shown. Crossroads really helped me figure out where I, I want to go. It's helped me to really find where I want to be in life and what career I wanted to pursue as an adult. Um, and I really have to say that that whole entire opportunity is this uh, idea of even pursuing something of this sort came from Crossroads and the way that they helped me to develop and mature as a young adult. I do.
This is Ben Kime, a very impressed father of the winner, the balloon winner, yes. Larry. How do you feel about his success? I feel so excited. I mean, even though he died because of the <laughs> judge, the um, evil umpire Mark. Yeah. He was, that was unforgivable. But yeah. he was a wonderful child. He was. He, he was. was. Thank he you was. for your time, Ben. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. This is Alita Berg reporting. <laughs> One, five, nine. <laughs> Terry, you gotta get the first three digits right. <laughs> 3.14. Wait, it's one. One, five. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. Let me, this time you go. Didn't you do over 100 digits last no, year? 60. Okay. 3.14159265358979323846. Um, hold on. Let me. What's with the sudden accent? Memories you'd like to say, Charlie? Any? Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm just putting it on you because hmm. that's, that's, how I, that's how I am. Uh, my favorite memory at Crossroads is uh, probably in middle school when we were all, all in the fishbowl and we were singing harmoniously. Uh, it was really nice. It probably wasn't, but uh, hey, the, senior, <laughs> the seniors in the art room kind of knocked on the, the window, but we didn't hear them at first. And so they kept knocking and then they just started banging on the window telling us to shut up. And it was the first kind of real embarrassing moment of middle school, but I think it helped shape, that, shape us in the future because <laughs> we continue to sing at school all the time. And now they're not here to bang on any windows to help us stop singing. <laughs> so we'll just keep on going. So that, that's a plus. Everybody should sing in school. <laughs> that's a, a personal belief that I hold very dearly, singing in school. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> um, so I think that, well, my first experience at Crossroads, which I think I'll always remember is when I walked through the door, I knew no one because I had just moved from out of town and out of nowhere, coming up, running from behind me, Terry ran up and jumped on me and gave me this enormous hug and introduced himself and I, he was a little, he freaked me out a little bit at the time, but now that I know Terry, I realized that he was just trying to welcome me and that's that was his way of doing that and I, it, it meant a lot that someone, even though I knew no one, was there to say hello and show me around. I mean, I guess since the beginning, everybody's pretty much been like Terry, where like you, you never really have to struggle to start a conversation with people. They're all pretty much open, and they'll probably start one with you, even if you don't. Even when we're not, we have a group that's not doing too well in what we're trying to do, I think it's really nice that we still are, act as a team and, and do well. I, the example that I'm thinking of is our baseball team. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're really, we're really good, though. So. <laughs> I mean, we've won one game since freshman year. Yep. And undefeated this year, though, so by the time this comes out. Right. I mean, undefeated isn't something we haven't played a game yet, but whatever. I we're mean, still undefeated. That's how it works. <laughs> but, but we're actually pretty bad. And, um, but I think it's really something that even though, you know, we, we have ridiculously long innings because we can't make three outs and you know, we, we, we struggle sometimes. Everyone is still a team and we still work well together and we're still able to joke around and have a good time even though it's, you know, it's kind of a bummer that we can't actually win a game. And, and, and then even that people get excited about the season when we start up next year because, you know, now, even though we, we had a terrible season last year, we're still really excited to get going again. We're, we're optimistic about this season. Always and, ready to win that one game. Right, and if anything, Horrible baseball experiences and playing games at least let you realize how to have fun in horrible situations of success at least. Because I mean, it's fun to play baseball, but like if you're just losing horribly for like 10 <laughs> runs and like you're hoping for a mercy rule, at least you try to have fun in the situation you're in. And as horrible as that sounds, I think that's still a valuable thing to know how to do. Yeah, I mean, at least it's never so close that like when we lose, <laughs> <laughs> we're angry because, you know, I mean, we're expecting it for about nine innings.
my like transition to crossroads it was i'm gonna like <laughs> be truthful like i did not want to come here at first just because i went to like my elementary school for so long and i knew all my friends and everything and i knew everybody so then when my mom told me i was coming here i was really pretty mad because i was like i don't want to make new friends i don't want to like have to like start all over but I got here and it was I was really afraid I was like okay everybody's gonna know each other people come here like all from New City nobody's gonna know me but it was like really fun and I got to meet a lot of people especially at um, Camp Lakewood which is like our overnight or whatever in middle school where the seventh and eighth grade go and it was just really cool because people were just really nice and I met like a whole bunch of kids and we just had a lot of fun like camping and whatnot even though I don't like bugs and I don't like camping <laughs> but <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing it and it's like my seventh grade year so then eighth grade year you know I was meeting people meeting like uh, all my new friends and whatnot and um, I started to realize I was like wow I have to do work now like at my old school you know I did homework and whatnot but it was like pretty easy but now I really did have to like work for it I played volleyball for Crossroads for all four years of high school and this past year, we did a really good job. We went undefeated in our conference. Um, we got a banner with our names on it, and that, that was just exciting because I feel like we we kind of leave our mark literally on the school, and that's that's really neat. We are experiencing some turbulence. It's the cataract. Mm. My name is Alvin Wing. 
I'm 18 years old right now and this is my first year in Crossroad. The my first experience and the most like memorable experience I have been here is about Terry. Like he might one of my best friend and Kevin Roger. <laughs> about Terry, like the first day I came here, I feel like like he my first like black best friend I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Like basically, like I never, I never seen the black people before I came here. So he welcomed me a lot. I feel like comfortable around him. He make me laugh every day. Thank you, Terry. I'd say the one thing that I miss most when it comes to graduation will probably be the people that I've met here at Crossroads College Prep because you're never ever gonna meet people like this guy. <laughs> or you're never gonna meet somebody like this person right here. Like this is the only place where I can think of where individuals can come and mesh together and really become this a really just united community. And it's, diff and it's difficult to see that go. You know, I'm gonna miss these guys. Um, and my favorite Crossroads College Prep experience had to be uh, a little less than two weeks ago. Maybe uh, when we went to uh, Bismarck High School and we won our uh, first district championship in basketball history at Crawford's College Prep. Senior night is a special night uh, for all of our players, boys and girls, cheerleaders tonight, pep squad, uh, dance team. It's, it's always important because we get to celebrate all the hard work that all of our kids put in uh, every year. And a lot of times uh, people don't understand how much work it takes. And this is our opportunity to thank them and let people know that they've really worked very hard for four years. It, it was a great night for the girls and uh, it's always good to have a win on senior night and it's always good to get an opportunity to make sure all the seniors play a lot on senior night that way all the home crowd gets to see them one final time this is a special class for me obviously my daughter's in this class and i know these girls on a more personal basis uh, than a lot of other classes so i'm going to miss the the personal interaction uh, a lot as far as on the court this group's leadership is second to none from the classes that I've had here in the last 12 years. I'm Larnie Snell, I'm a senior, and I'm the student coach of the cheerleading team. So last year, my junior year, Ms. G approached me with the like, proposal of starting a cheer team, and I was really standoffish about it because I was like, I don't want to make a commitment to something that hasn't really been like introduced to the school, but she really was determined to try and get me involved with it. So this year, my senior year, she really pushed me. She was like, do it for yourself, do it for these girls. You'll regret it if you don't. And she was right. I'm really glad that I joined the team to help guide them and shape them and help direct them to strengthen their technique. The girls are really a joy. They're pure entertainment. You go to a game, they're really loud. They're really excited about being there. So I'm glad that I was able to involve myself with them. I, I think I definitely learned how to like be a good teammate because um, I know like when I was younger I'm always really intense and really passionate about it and 
while I was always trying to help the team do better, sometimes the way I went about doing things wasn't exactly the most constructive method. I think probably like the biggest thing was teamwork because like even though like you can kind of overwork the whole teamwork thing, really like as I look back like to, to ninth grade, it seems as though when our team wasn't working, clearly things didn't go well, but when our team was working, like we just killed it all the time. Like we won our conferences and yeah. But yeah, like Don was saying, you really learn how to be a team and I mean, it's just like every senior night, it's like you're, lo you're not losing a family, but it is, you become so close. The season's, I think like four months and it's practices, late nights, co going to games, just all the time and you really, form that bond between the whole team and you learn how to be a better teammate and also just a better person in general. Yeah. Well, what Sharon Dance has taught me was cheerleading isn't something, isn't just arm movements and being peppy. Cheerleading is really a sport and it's really a commitment. And it's hard to do working with seven girls and different attitudes. So cheerleading and dance has both strengthened my leadership skills. I think it's taught me to just have pride and have fun and enjoy doing what you love. Also having a community there that has the same hobby and you guys share a common thing and that's dance or cheer. Um, I learned to just get along with people, work well with others, a skill that's going to transcend high school and into college and then throughout your years after that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to miss this year. I am too. We had a good time. It's been real. Coming into Crossroads, I wouldn't say that I was thoroughly prepared for all the work that you have to do, but uh, sophomore year I got a little better, junior year I got better, senior year I feel like I'm actually prepared to go to college, which is a great thing, and you get help from friends, you get help from teachers, it all makes it um, doable, I would say. Um, it's great going to such a small school where I get to know everybody. Uh, even though there's hardly any guys in our grade, uh, I still make a lot of friends. I know everybody in the grade, talk to everybody, and even though some people get on your nerves, it's still you still have a great time with everybody in the grade, and it's nice to kind of all be together. Well, one of my uh, favorite experiences at Crossroads was would probably be the John Bro soccer game, sectional game. Definitely. Yeah. Where, uh, well, we're not really that big of a school, so with all the public schools that usually have like a whole school spirit, I should say. Um, to win the John Bros game and then uh, just to see the lookout in everyone's faces, all of the people that came to support us was actually like amazing because um, just the excitement and everyone's happiness for us uh, going to, uh, to a place where we've never been. Spot
My favorite experience at Crossroads is probably doing the musicals because I love to sing, whether it be in the hallway or on stage. I'm always loud and annoying with my singing. So um, I liked Footloose last year because I could be a total spaz on stage and attempt to dance, though I cannot dance. I still tried my best. Um, and I also like hanging out with the cast, like they're really fun. I like playing improv games because you have the opportunity to be really weird with improv games and I am very weird. But um, yeah, so I like musicals and I like casts, period. I basically play volleyball. I am incapable of playing other sports. So uh, volleyball is really fun because A, you barely have to move, which is great and B, all my friends are in volleyball and my dad is the coach, which some might think would be awkward and weird and uh, have favoritism in it, but turns out he showed no sign of favoritism and played me a little bit, which is a little sad. But, um, so I like volleyball and I've been playing since ninth grade. I actually tore my knee playing it in ninth grade. That wasn't fun, but other than that, volleyball is real cool and I made the warm-up CD with Nell which included a lot of dubstep and a lot of 90s music including some in sync which is always popping so I'm gonna be honest when I was in ninth grade I had a hard time finding myself I was extremely embarrassing and nobody liked me which is totally cool because I was really weird and unacceptable at all times. So I decided in 10th grade that I wanted to go to the local high school, Webster, where I thought I had a lot of friends there. Brutally wrong. So I went there in 10th grade and I hated it and it was not fun at all and all my classes were awkward and weird. So in after about a month, of going there. I was sitting at my lunch table and I looked around and I realized that I really missed Crossroads and I missed all the people there whether or not they missed me. So I texted my dad and I said, listen, I gotta get back to school tomorrow or I'm gonna die here. And then he said, uh, the headmaster wants you back by tomorrow, I'll give you all your books. I was like, thank you so much, I cannot be here anymore. So I got back and it turns out everyone did miss me, which was very nice and uh, I got a lot more friends after that and I kind of opened up and I think I opened up because everyone else was kind of like finding themselves and uh, we were able to be friends and like know each other really well like I made friends with uh, Nell and Dom which I'm sure they're doing an interview together and uh, they're really fun but I like everyone in my grade I think that um, our grade is pretty close and I think that we're all really nice people and I enjoy everyone.
So, I don't think a lot of people knew in seventh grade that my mom um, had colon cancer, colorectal cancer. She was diagnosed when I was in fourth grade, and I will never forget the day she told me because it was on our girls' night out. We used to hang out on Fridays, just the two of us, and that would be like our special time that we got to spend together. And we were walking, and she said that she had something to tell me, so I was like, okay, well, what? She said, um, I went to the doctor and I found out that I have cancer and I remember stopping right where I was and I started crying in the middle of the mall in front of all these people and just to hear that my mom had cancer was really scary and later on eighth grade we found out that it was back well not even back it had never gone away so they had no idea that cancer had spread. She had tumors on her lungs and other places that I can't even remember. I remember even having to stay with other families sometimes because my mom was in the hospital and my dad had to go and be with her. And you know, I really thank them for that, especially like uh, the Reeds. Because they're like another family to me and I'll never be able to explain how much it means <laughs> that they were able to be there and hold, hold me up and be my backbone <laughs> when my real backbone had to go and be elsewhere. And they did whatever they could, whenever they could. <laughs> and they're extremely wonderful people for that. <laughs> and so many other people that helped us. Samantha. Samantha's been there forever. I've known her since kindergarten. So she's always known and she's always been there. I have immense thanks for her too. My mom was a trooper and she started learning how to walk again and she came home on Christmas Eve. And that was the best Christmas I've ever had, being able to come home from school and see my mom again every day. But then I came home one day and my dad said that the nurse had been by and she thought that my mom only had a couple days left. It was like 12.20 in the morning, mom passed away and that was horrible. I remember screaming and I had gone upstairs and I picked up the phone and I called Samantha. And she had just woken up right before. It was like she was supposed to be the one that I went to, was supposed to be the one that was there. And I told her and then that's where support came pouring in the next day people came over after school they brought a huge card that everybody signed and that meant incredible amounts to me I still have it um, everybody wrote something even if it was just their name it meant a lot it doesn't take a whole lot to say to somebody especially when you can't think of anything in a situation like that but it means more than you know. I first started riding when I was nine years old. It's been half my life. Um, I was in first grade. One of my friends, Addie Steinbach, she was really into horses and 
I was in that phase where I just wanted to copy everything she did, so I started riding. But then it ended up that I became obsessed with horses and became that, that horse girl, and she kind of forgot about them. But since then, I've been, I've been riding, um, taking riding lessons every week. And during the summers, I've even like gone to camps in the summer for weeks at a time. And I started riding with this boy, Image, a couple of years ago. My trainer, Lada Eklund, she completely changed the way I ride. Uh, she's an amazing trainer. She competes at the top of her level. And I've learned so much from her and becomes a much more skilled rider, a lot more technique and precision. And this horse, he's although he's not really like a finely bred competition horse, he's come a lot farther than anyone expected. And we've uh, gone up the levels and are actually going to be competing at a pretty high level this summer. I think that sort of to become a full person, you need a passion. And for me, it's been both horses and art. And horseback riding has always been not only just a hobby, that's something I can go out to and um, improve myself in and get better at, but it's been a release. Like when I've had a hard day at school or something, I can come out to the barn and ride around and I just forget about everything. I just focus on the horse, focus on my body, focus on working together and completing some sort of movement or assignment that we have to do. And so it's functioned as a stress relief, as well as just giving me goals, because when you're riding, there's always something more you can be doing, always something you can be doing better, always something to improve in. So it's just something to work towards that's separate from school, separate from friends, separate from art, and every other kind of aspect of normal life. Um, probably my middle school years were the hardest times of my life. Living with my mom, and we were living in Columbia, Missouri, so pretty far away from the rest of my family. and. Uh, my mom started to develop some problems of her own. She started to develop um, issues with alcoholism. And, um... Hold on, I need to stop them. Jessica Field is just one of those people that is just a quality person and somebody you can be really close friends with. I've known Jessica for four years now and I'm so thankful that I've gotten to be friends with her. She is a wonderful person and nobody could ever replace her in my life. And I don't know how my high school experience would be different without her, but I'm sure it wouldn't have been as good. Uh, the whole family was affected by it, um, especially like all of my efforts during that time went into taking care of her and making sure that she was okay and um, making sure that you know she wasn't going to do anything that would endanger any of our lives. Um, so obviously school was not my main priority during that time and my grades suffered. Um, I, th I mean our family was basically kind of torn apart during that time and I was like living with a bunch of different people and eventually my aunt and uncle stepped in and took me to live with them and I lived with them for a little bit. Um, towards the end of the summer it started to become very clear that I needed to be enrolled in a school and that living with my mom was not going to be an option. So my aunt and uncle started to look for schools to enroll me in and we looked at public schools near the area but it was just very obvious that that's not a place I wanted to be um, associating myself with. There was um, there were just a few other schools that we had in mind. My cousin was going to Crossroads at the time so we looked at Crossroads. And if Crossroads didn't provide financial aid for Jessica to come to our school then I wouldn't have gotten the chance to know her and be friends with her and I just can't say thank you enough to Crossroads for providing to people like Jessica and allowing for friendships like my friendship with Jessica to exist because of the way that they're able to give. So after I finally became enrolled in Crossroads um, it was immediately clear how much more of a support system I had. Um, basically everyone around me started to step in to help me get through whatever I needed to get through and the friends that I made at Crossroads um, definitely changed my life for the better. Whenever I have an issue like, like that of that magnitude now I can easily just go talk to a friend um, and there's always someone there who knows my situation and who's going to be non-judgmental about whatever I'm going through um, and so I never have to worry about going through something like that 
by myself without help ever again. I know there's always gonna be someone to step in on my behalf. I think the best part about Crossroads was coming into this school is the only student from Forsyth. I didn't really know anyone, but the whole community opened their arms to every single student in the whole school. And so my favorite thing about Crossroads is probably just the entire community and how welcome they are and how you can find your closest friends here. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite things too, that just like there's so many different people from so many different places that you can get to know. <laughs> it's kind of a place that's really special because people from all over just with different different types of backgrounds can come under one roof and dance together or laugh together, or put on a play or play on a sports team. So there's just a ton of different activities here that are all really important. And one isn't more important than the other. For example, we have chess and we have plays and we have sports and they just kind of reflect all the different types of people who go to this school. The first thing I remember about Crossroads is going there and seeing all the art on the walls and all the instruments in the hallway. I didn't really know what to think. I had come from a place that was much more clean and tidy in that sense. There wasn't really much adorning the walls. There wasn't really much clutter in the hallway. But at Crossroads, people just threw their backpacks really wherever and just kind of made it comfortable. My favorite memory about Crossroads is probably sometime in 11th grade when I came to school for Halloween dressed as Elmo. And that wasn't weird. That was just silly. That was fun. That was Halloween. And I remember thinking that at my other school, that totally wouldn't have flown. People would have given you like strange looks all day. People would have questioned what you were doing and if you were mentally sound. But at Crossroads, it really didn't matter because everybody la could laugh at themselves. Everybody could have a good time in a silly way and they didn't really care. Coming from New City, I thought that everyone who came with me from New City, we'd all be the same, we'd all know that we were the ones from New City, but honestly, I have to take a lot of time to think about who actually came from New City when you're thinking about it. And when they pull us aside for like the New City pictures at um, announcements, I'm really shocked at some of the people who aren't in that group, even though I went to New City since I was five. So I feel like we've had a lot of blending and a lot of a sort of melting pot effect in our grade, where everyone 
no matter what sort of transformation we've undergone through the whole six years that we were here or four years if you came in ninth grade or whenever you came, I think we've maintained a really positive environment where you can literally just be yourself and no one will judge you for that. They may have different views than you, they may see the world differently than you, but the fact that we are all able to come together with our different opinions and have a discussion and not have any problems with the person who's sitting with you in the room, I think that's something really, really awesome about our grade. This is, this is the last senior night for you guys, so this is kind of a sad little moment, but it's also a really exciting moment because you guys get to move on into a gr big, grander place and have so much fun out in the world, sharing all of your talents with them, and we're so excited for all of you. So, um, you know, I, I, every show that I do is, the music is always incredibly important to me, and even though this was a musical and, uh, Sondheim did a pretty good job with that, so. Uh, <laughs> but I did, I did make a pre-show uh, mix that is kind of thematically in keeping with what I think this show is about. And um, this, this CD is all music that is to comfort you in those times when you're out in the woods and you may feel like you're alone or if you're afraid. I made a mix for you guys to listen to, to know that no one is alone. So that's what I'm doing. There's one other reason this department was running so smoothly when I got here. <laughs> Maddie's crying. Shush, Bridget. She's here tonight. Words of, of a wise soul. I, um, as much as I've seen you grow, it's, it's unbelievable how wise I have seen just like gushing wisdom, and I look forward to hearing the journey that you're going to continue because I know the path is going to be beautiful. Congratulations.
my name is Mia Janae Watkins. I'm a senior here at Crossroads College Prep. I've been writing since I learned how to write, and um, it's, I think writing for me is, is relaxing. It's, it's really all that I just love to do it. It's just storytelling at its best, you know, having the gift to just use words to create your own world and your own characters and all these stories and scenarios. And uh, it's just, I think it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And um, I've been writing around the house and I was literally used to take just blank journals and just, I, I didn't care who it was. I just, I'm writing my story in this. Junior year when someone said, you know, you should really think about publishing a book at such a young age. And so, ta-da. Uh, this is my self-published book, Eden's Valley, Land of Life. It is a Christian fiction book for teens and young adults. And it tells a story about uh, these characters I have gone on this journey trying to find the Garden of Eden, but it's the Garden of Eden, but after Adam and Eve were kicked out. So some are looking for the Tree of Life to use its power. Some are looking for the valley to, to um, find a good place to call home. And uh, it's just a race to the valley. Um, what I would say to my younger self is not to be afraid of the light within you. Uh, you know, don't care what people think. Do not care what people think. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, be you, do you, you know, look ahead, there's a bright future for you. You don't need to worry, don't, don't look back, you know, um, if people will love you, they'll love you, and if people that don't, then just move on. Do you feel in your heart that you have met the obligations of the program? Yes, I have met all obligations of the program. Are you ready to take your place in society as a young woman who is willing to learn from mistakes, conquer challenges, and emerge as a responsible, caring adult? I am ready. Come on. Well, me and the fellow seniors are in this program and it's sponsored by the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated of St. Louis, and um, it's called Rites of Passage of Rhea. And what I gained from it was uh, a sense of sisterhood, you know. Um, my sense of sisterhood has kind of been damaged due to some things in the past. And so um, coming in this program really kind of helped me, and it's kind of like I said, I can breathe around people, you know, you don't have to, be so stiff or act a certain way, just be yourself and people will uh, accept it for, you who, for who you are. And uh, I just, I love it. Um, I, I love the people, I love my Kwanvisha sisters, and it's, um, that's what we're called. And I just, it's a great program. It's really good. Well, I'm going to introduce you. She's about three years old. And uh, to be honest with everybody, it was, it was difficult at first to find out that my son had a sister that was only 18 months younger than he was. But once I got to know her, she was a beautiful spirit, and I found out that her birthday was in July, and she was a cancer like me, so I was oh, another moody person in the family. And uh, <laughs> um, I learned you know, about her through her weekend visits with her brother and everything. And then, uh, I'll never forget the day that Danielle called me and said, that Jolanda had lost her mother. And no matter what the situation is, and no matter what had went on in the past, I made a, I prayed about it, and I made a pact that day, that I was gonna be Mama Donna. And I was gonna be the one consistent person, no matter what anybody else did, that I was gonna be that person to be that mother figure for her. Okay, I, guess I can say, this is my stamp, okay? And I can say it's been a roller coaster ride. 
being a single father, and having a daughter, the first time I had to go through the school, and my family problems. <laughs> and I remember it because I put it on the counter, and the cashier looked at me and I'm like, you ain't good. But I knew it was for my baby. Police officer, and every day, she is my mentor. Because every day, I got to come home to her. She's my oldest daughter, and she's my mom. So I got her the strongest correction center, lock it, and I put her mom's picture in Because I know her mother's in her heart, I'm looking over. And I want you to use this locket to share all your memories from this day forward with your mom. Put them in here. Even though I'm trying to send her away, she not leaving. <laughs> and I know police officers in the front behind them, as well as Washington. And to those fathers out there, I can connect with other police officers and other schools. See me afterwards, and we'll set up a network. <laughs> but say I love you. I'm always going to be in your corner, no matter what. And I'm not going to change the locks in the room. I promise. Probably one of my favorite experiences at Crossroads was being able to meet and become so close to uh, these two foreign exchange students, Lena from Germany and Milu from Ecuador. They came last year during junior year and somehow from the fall we started talking and became such close friends. We just became this really tight-knit group. We, we do sleepovers together, went to concerts together, had movie nights, um, had group Skype talks after they left and we missed them so much but they became so close that they've been able to come back and visit us even multiple times in Lena's case. And then this summer I'm gonna be able to go to Ecuador and visit Nilu in her home and get me her friend just like she came in that all of ours. Coming to America was a big thing for both of us. And we were like, I was really nervous coming to Crossroads because you think like, oh, are they gonna accept me or take me as I am and for what I am? But I think like acceptance is one of the big things they like teach you at Crossroads and that you gotta learn how to take people and take them for what they are. And I think we got pretty much accepted at Crossroads and we found some great friends, and I feel like, yeah, coming home, like coming to St. Louis and coming to Crossroads feels like coming home now, because we found a lot amount of great friends. It was difficult at first, but, um, well, the first day that I was in Crossroads, Terry came to me and to Lena, and it was like, Oh, are you the foreign students? And they were so happy and so excited. So like from the beginning, all the things were like cool. And Jojo came and say, oh, I love your name. So like you could feel like how nice people is. Um, it was really hard, like the subjects and learning in English because it was a whole different experience. But at the end, everybody was like, help you and like take care of you and it has been a really nice experience and how Lena said like the fact of coming here again it's just awesome because you know that you have like a family here in San Luis and I love that. <laughs> One of the best experiences that we had was Halloween because at least I mean I don't know in Ecuador it's so different like it's not that big and we went like in Lena's neighborhood like a bunch of houses and making jokes and having candy, American fatty. Yeah. And <laughs>
<laughs> but it was so cool, like having costumes and that like Halloween sp uh, spirit was awesome. Yeah, and before we say goodbye to everyone and wish you the best, we want to say like the most important thing to us was, I guess, um, our group of our girls that was called JAMA. Well, yeah, and I got to do it with, we got to do a really good friend this year. I don't know. I had this big look for you. <laughs> but it was Maya, Jojo, and Brittany. Oh my God, all the things that we do. Big look for you. Uh, we had a lot of experiences, and I'm gonna say cut words that only they would know, like Tenerosa, Salty Marshmallow, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, sneaking uh, after lunch, um, hoping that the teachers won't catch us. It was just awesome, and I want to thank you for everything, because you all make this a really good experience for me and for Lena. And I want to wish you the best. Um, I don't know. You, you are awesome, guys, and and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for everything. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we love you. We yeah. really, really love you. We miss you a lot. We miss you a lot. And have fun. College is waiting for you yeah. guys. It's but a completely new experience that you really enjoy. <laughs> Last thing I gotta say is, Lord Smacks, fun! So before I came to Crossroads, I went to a school, I'm not going to give its name, but the school was good. It provided me education. It, it gave me what he needed at the school. It wasn't like mean or anything like that. But the thing that it lacked most was just diversity in general. As a boy, especially an African-American male, the only thing you could do was either be smart or you could play a sport. There wasn't any in between. Dancing, singing, acting, things that I'm known at Crossroads for weren't really there when I was there. It wasn't until 
shortly after my parents died and my aunt took me over that I had to start changing schools and getting out of that different environment. So when we came here, I realized, what is this place? What is what is this thing? I didn't know where white people live. I didn't know where Jewish people live, Asians. The school I come from just only had one single group. And that's all I knew. And seventh grade year, when I first came here, it just opened my eyes. It, it, tore, it tore down walls that I didn't know existed. Uh, people of all different faiths, of all different walks of life, ages, people really coming from a completely opposite, as you would think, background, and being able to talk to one another as if they were brothers or sisters. That's the thing I like about Crossroads. Here, uh, it may not be perfect. There's no school that's perfect. I got the chance of a lifetime to actually do something different. There was also the time in eighth grade where um, we had this thing called lip sync. And that's the best thing about Crossroads is our spirited events. We weren't spirited before um, our grade came along, but I tell you that's why our grade is the best because you know, We's good. We's good. No, there's no, there's no, no offense to 2011 or anyone who comes before or after, but I'm just saying 2012, it starts here and it might end here. Let's just hope the Mayans are wrong. Anyway. <laughs>
attending the Crossroads during my eighth grade year, which was in 2007. From the very moment that I got there, I felt like it was a different environment from where I came from. Uh, my old school was definitely um, a racially divided school where I was just known as the Black Britney. That obviously isn't a good thing. Um, and so when I came, I think the most memorable thing about my entry into Crossroads was my eighth grade year. Um, just going to Camp Lakewood and feeling um, accepted by everyone. Um, like I literally remember every single detail about where everyone was, who talked to me first, everything, like what I ate, what everybody ate, like everything about Camp Lakewood. And just knowing that from the moment that I got there, I was accepted by people who didn't even know me, um, I, I think was, I, I guess I can say, life-changing that knowing that I can be accepted by people who didn't know me. All I care about is money in the city that I'm from. I'm a s till I feel it. I'm a s till, till it's done. I don't really give a f and my excuses that I'm young and I'm only getting older. Somebody should have told you I'm on one. Yeah. I said I'm on one. So, today's the day. Um, we're graduating today, and there are mixed emotions, I think, probably by the whole class. Uh, a little happiness, a little sadness, a little everything. Um, this is where we're gonna graduate in the gym. It looks pretty nice, actually. Um, thank you, Ms. G, and anybody else who helped. Uh, this has been a good year. It's been a good six years, and um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm really excited, not only for today, uh, but I'm also excited for like, next year and like, just the next step in our life. Definitely. So I, I keep thinking about this, like kind of stressing out about it, like, oh my goodness, this is going to be the end, this is going to be the end, oh no, what am I going to do next? But then like, it dawns on me, this isn't the end, it's just like the beginning of the next chapter in our lives. Let us rise as we honor the class of 2012 as they enter the room. We are gathered here today to celebrate and to honor the impressive accomplishments of this highly capable, thoughtful, and resourceful group of young people who have reached this important milestone in their growth development and education. On the first day of school this year, I reminded our student body that the reason we all come to school each day is to help students create bright, exciting futures for themselves. Our focus this morning is on the class of 2012 as it should be, for they deserve significant recognition for all that they have accomplished, endured, and enjoyed during their journey through secondary school. NASA 2012 has selected four classmates to offer their reflections this morning on behalf of the entire class. We begin with Terry Watkins.
Good afternoon. When I first came to Crossroads, everything was new to me. At my elementary school, you could only play a sport or read a book. So as the fall of my seventh grade year rolled around, I had little experience or exposure to the activities I could not now live without. I started out not really knowing what to do with myself. My first reaction was to try and get involved with as much as I could. I joined everything, theater, sports, student council, dance team, and whatever else I knew I could get into. I did pretty well in some, and in some, I did not. I never regretted being involved, though, because even if I wasn't the fastest runner or the good rider, I got to know the people that were. For months, I had pondered what on earth I was going to say on this day. In the past six years, as individuals and as a class, we have set new standards for students at Crossroads. We have run activities such as social justice and current news. We have brought home banners for both district and conference championships, which our school had not seen before our class. And we have founded student groups and clubs such as Mock Trial and Drama Club. And our class is the only high school class in the nation to participate in one of our peers' feature-length films. I've gotten to know my classmates over the years, and there's not a doubt in my mind that every single one of them will be successful. I don't mean million dollar mansion successful or butlers waiting on you every whim successful. I mean going to work smiling because you love your job kind of success and the proud to tell people what you do kind of success and the making a positive impact on the world kind of success. As the 2012 graduates of Crossroads College Prep, we have all been on a journey that has been both challenging and rewarding. We did this and not only made it, but excelled, we are still here. And looking back now, I feel we are a lot better off because of it. We have also maintained a deep sense of friendship with one another that I find unique to our class. Although no journey is perfect, I truly believe our time here has taught us invaluable lessons. I do know that the most important aspect of our young lives is to find something that does matter to us and hold on to it for dear life. However, we have not just been at any high school. We have been at a school that I am sure we can all agree is different from any other. This school has blessed us with memories I am sure not many high schoolers have. This day is not simply a celebration commemorating our accomplishments. It is also a reminder of the challenges we have faced in order to reach this point in our lives. I know I can speak for my entire class when I say that we have all faced challenges and persevered through struggles to reach this day. Please, I implore you, if you take one thing away from this speech, let it be to forget the money, forget the fame, and forget the butlers. Do what you love and love what you do. We must recall that we have climbed a mountain once before, and though new ones will present new challenges, there is nothing preventing us from reaching the pizza house. Even more important than the journey itself, however, are the people we take it with. As we reflect on our journey together, I hope that we never forget the 38 faces sitting with us, because the memories we have shared and the lessons we have learned are irreplaceable. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get fucked to kind. Hold your applause. This is your song, not mine. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please hold your applause. For I just applied logic. Keys, keys, open doors. Now I'm balcony, opera, black tux, binocular, black lux. Stop it, I shouldn't be so popular. Main key. Popping up, face keep popping up on the two. I'm just watching Pacquiao box him up. How would I know HBO would get a shot of us? Sitting so close that we almost got snout on us. Please don't bow in my presence. How am I a legend? I just got 10 number one albums, maybe now 11. More hits than an hour 11. That is no reason to treat me like I'm somehow from out of heaven. Heaven knows that I made my mistakes. That God, what a guy, as I say, my grace. Who would have thought by making birds migrate for the winter? I'll be fly all summer, might I say? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get fucked too kind. Hold your applause. This is your song, not mine. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. You fuck too kind. Do me a favor, don't do me no favors. I'll handle mine. Hokey, baby. We are really high, really high tonight. We tip the waiter a hundred dollars to keep the ice cold, right? We the last ones to keep the wise guys cold alive. If I can't live by my word, then I'd much rather die. No, no, don't thank me, it's just how my suit is stitched. I'm cut from a different cloth, I'm just who the shoe fits. For the color of money like a Tom Cruise flips. If I put eight balls in corners without using pool sticks. Beautiful music when champagne flutes click, eh? Beautiful women. Uh -huh.